It's finally here, guys. How to Train Your Dragon 3, The Hidden World. Right now, on Miss Coft Entertainment. Here's Johnny! I love the smell of my cup in the morning. Get to the chopper! Send off to my left friend! I'm gonna make him an offer again. This is my job! You're gonna need a bigger boat. Welcome back, Misfits, to another episode of Miscast Entertainment Movie Reviews with your host, Daisy Von Dutch. Hello, darlings. I'm hailing from Seattle, joining you to tell you about this fabulous movie. And what makeup are you wearing, Daisy? Oh, oh, please. Thank you for noticing. Um, dragon, how to train your dragon makeup, please, please. I did it myself, if you don't mind. I love the scales. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for and this non-makeup host right here, William Davis Moore. But I do have dragons on my awesome Miscast Entertainment Dragon Warrior shirt. <laughs> oh, I have a dragon on my leggings that I got from you. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. All right, guys. So we're going to get right into this amazing finale to this awesome trilogy, How to Train Your Dragon. Um, it's been a long time coming. Nine years. Nine years of, of a wonderfully emotional ride. It's 104 minutes long for an animation. I guess these days is not that big of a deal. They're, they're, they're pushing two hours normally. On average anymore. It seems that way. Let's get into uh, the Rotten Tomatoes. They are at 98%. And you know those scallywags are pretty strict about their ratings. So it's, it's damn good. I'm excited. Yeah, it was based on 51 critics, and that's a lot because uh, the reason it has so many critics rating it, it was released uh, early in Australia on January 3rd. Uh, let's go right into the stars of this show. So starring in this show, we've got uh, Jay Baruchel, who plays Hiccup. Um, he also did Hiccup in the Netflix animated series, which is pretty cool <laughs> because a lot of times the main actors of a movie don't actually go into the TV productions of it, but these guys did, most of them, except for, like, Jonah Hill and Kristen Wiig. Uh, oh. Uh, Jay also played Dave in The Last Merlinian in The Sorcerer's Apprentice. It was a flop, but it's got some good family time fun to it. Next, we have America Ferreira, who uh, plays Astrid, and uh, she's best known as playing Ugly Betty, uh, yeah. <laughs> that hit series back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Playing the evil villain this time, we have F. Murray Abraham. Uh, he plays Grimmel the Grizzly. And uh, he's pretty nasty in the movie, by the way. Uh, he also voiced Jupiter in Isle of Dogs. And is literally in everything from Amadeus to Star Trek. So, All right, we got Kate Blanchett as Valka, Hiccup's mother. She comes back. She's Galadriel in The Lord of the Rings. And mm -hmm. more recently, she's Florence Zimmerman in The House with a Clock in Its Walls. Uh, we got Jonah Hill as Snot Lout. Yeah. Jonah Hill is best known animation-wise for voicing Green Lantern in the Lego movies. We've got Christopher Mintz Place as Fish Legs. Um, he's always fun in these movies. And uh, he voiced King Gristle in Trolls, which a lot of kids like these days. I mean, my, my nieces are in love with that that movie we've got Kristen wig as rough nut he did a great job that was hilarious she also plays agent lucy wilde in despicable me 2 and despicable me 3 so here's the controversial part instead of tj miller reprising his role as tough nut he has been replaced by justin rupel that's because tj miller has been in a whole bunch of trouble lately he did a bomb threat on an amtrak train and he's had some misconduct stuff going on um, I can't find any information on if he was actually fired from the role, but I just assume that he was. You guys out there can look it up. Comment below if you know the actual answer. Um, I just assume that with all the controversy that happened with him in 2018 that uh, they just replaced him. And reprising the role as uh, Stoic the Vast, we have Gerard Butler. <laughs> yeah. So he was the Phantom in The Phantom of the Opera which not a lot of people know, and everybody knows Leonidas from 300. This yeah. is uh, Sparta! <laughs> that did really not good. do it justice. Uh, no, it did not yeah. do any justice. <laughs> uh, yeah, so he's reprising his role in some flashbacks. And, oh, spoilers, by the way, because uh, we, we might talk about the past two movies, and there's going to be spoilers in that. 
but there's no spoilers in this review for the third movie. So yeah. Uh, yeah. just if you haven't seen the first two, go out and watch them, then check this out, then go see the third one. It's all good. Um, Can I just add, um, don't forget Kit Harrington. Hello. I was just about to round it out with, with old <laughs> Jon Snow. <laughs> uh, yes, Kit Harrington as uh, Eret, the baddie turned good in the last one, uh, mm-hmm. is back and kind of has a little bit of a relationship going on in this one with someone special that uh, won't name any names. It's a non-spoiler review. And you can't forget good old Craig Ferguson uh, from the Late Late Show. I mean, he's always amazing to have anywhere. Uh, I love his role as Gobbler. So, All right, so that's it. That's what I got for uh, the breakdown. Let's get right into the non-spoiler review. What I love most about these movies, what I think that that really these movies capture is the underdog story and true heart. This series is definitely in my top three best animated series of all time. I mean, it's very rare that an animation can capture both the heart of an adult and a child at the same time with the same level of emotion uh, and interest. And this movie does that hands down. I really enjoy the fact that as we're waiting for the films to be released, that the characters age as an actor would. Yeah. So when we come back into it, like the character is like that many years older. Very real. It keeps it really real. You can actually humanly relate to an animated character. I thought that was amazing. And it was really cool to see uh, the, the, pre-show viewing had every age group. There were kiddies, there were older people, there were like young uh, adults in there, and people were cheering and clapping and laughing. Everybody was on the same page. It was amazing. Everybody, the kids were having a good time, the young adults, the older adults. It was it was really interesting to see how everybody really rallied and got excited and was happy and interacted together. Yeah, the, the fact that the kids and the adults have the same feeling is, is beyond awesome. The thing with DreamWorks, man, uh, with this series in particular, is the animation quality is un freaking believable. Yes. I mean, the you. level of detail. Yeah. Oh, my it, gosh. It, the opening scene was amazing. It looked so real. I was like, wait a minute. Is this animation? Or, or, or did they actually insert some real stuff? Because I couldn't tell. It was that good. Yeah, there's some scenes where they're walking around, just normal, regular scenes where they're moving around, the lighting, the textures, uh, the color, just the way things move. Uh, It's very hard to not get lost in suspension of disbelief and believe that you're actually looking at something that's shot with a normal camera. It was really amazing. I have to say well done to these guys. And and you can really see the love that they put into this. Yeah, and... And you know what? Uh, again, uh, you can tell the cast has a lot of passion in it because they they stayed on for the Netflix series, which I find that commendable. I love it when an artist takes ownership of their um, character all the way through the entire media process. You have to go see this movie. I'm so excited that I got to see the early viewing. Um, I'm stoked that I got tickets for it <laughs> and actually got to keep a seat because I think I was going to, I thought that I would be elbowing my way through um but luckily i did i gotta see definitely go see it um you're not gonna be disappointed i loved it so much i'll turn around and go see it again this one was (laughs) just a big ball of emotion um in the first one it was hiccup learning who he was as a kid the second one it was hiccup becoming an adult you know making Mm -hmm. making his dad actually proud becoming chief all that uh, same with with uh, Toothless, you know. They they both are on the same on the same ride, yeah. and uh, and this one it's taking ownership of their communities and becoming the real leaders. I think the only yeah. time I've ever seen it before was like the Harry Potter uh, series. But it, it's really good. It resonates with you, and yeah. and that's why it captivates an adult audience. So if you're a fan of these guys, uh, if you like the last two, uh, which I don't see why you wouldn't, uh, you no. definitely gotta check out three. Three is, it, it's it's the end, it's the finale, it's the third act, it's the great uh, conclusion. Yeah, um, it's a and grand that, finale and it nicely wraps it all up in a pretty yeah. little package, man, and you're going to love it. All right, That's guys, it? it's going to do it. If you like our content, you know the drill. Hit that there subscribe yep. button and ring the bell next to it to get notified of all future content. Then 
Head on over to MrCastEntertainment.com where we have some seriously cool merch. Even shirts with dragons on them. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll catch you next time. Peace. Yeah. Hey, bud. Wait up. Well, I started out all alone. He's not the only one. The hidden world, it really does exist. Now that's a king. You're right, bud. It's time. Yeah.